Hey guys, what's going on? A day from Computer Plus. Now, in today's video, I'm just going to give you guys an overview of the LG G Watch running Android 6.0.1 Marshmallow. Now, if you guys want to check out this cool watch face, it's called Futuristic. You guys should check it out on the Play Store itself. It's a paid app, so check it out and leave a comment down below if you actually like this video. So, let's get into the top things about Android 6.0 Marshmallow for the LG G Watch. Now, we all know Doze is actually in this build where battery optimization is a lot more persistent instead of lacking from behind. Now, in this case, we could actually leave the watch on standby for, like, say, for example, a couple of hours and come back and see it at 80% still, you know, which is ridiculous. We haven't, we didn't see that in Lollipop, but now we see it in Android 6.0.1. So let's go into the settings. As you can see, once I scroll down right there, our pull down notification shade, we have the do not disturb tab, which wasn't there before. We have the theater mode, which was there, it actually came back. The brightness boost actually came back again, and the settings tab. There's a different animation once I pressed that as a while ago. So, the top things to know about this build is that we have no Wi Fi, so that's all the question. We have the gesture control, and also we have permissions tab and also those mode within the developer section I think where you could actually change certain settings in there if it's available so let's go through the settings as I said no Wi-Fi available so you know if you guys want to comment about it about how to get Wi-Fi on this watch which is really it's impossible because it's actually a hardware implementation instead of a software implementation hence the reason why you couldn't get a software update and get Wi-Fi um, automatically and also we don't have a speaker we just have a mic so you know yeah that that's all of the question so let's scroll down we have the brightness option which was there before change watch face change the size of the font gestures now in this case what I mean by gestures is that they made it a lot more simple where you could actually watch like that and scroll down like that and also to, e to exit an app and open an app just like that. If I just turn to watch certain places, you know, the gyro sensor will pick up and actually open the app, close the app, scroll up and scroll down if you do certain gestures like that. Always on was always there. The Bluetooth option was always there. The airplane mode is actually new. I think it is, but it's actually new towards me. So, you know, you guys could actually turn it on, save battery life and whatnot. Accessibility tab was always there. Date and time is actually new. I forgot to mention that, but it's actually new, and you could fiddle around with it, turn on and off from phone sync. Now, if you do turn it off, it means that you could actually set the time zone. So, say for example, you turned off your Bluetooth connection, and your phone, your phone is not going to be synced with this watch. It will pick up from the time zone and correct the time for you, in the case you left your phone at home or you left it somewhere, but you still want to know the time. You could also change the time zone. Um, daylight savings if you want to turn that on or if you want to change the date and time itself manually so that option option is there manual ad adjustment for the date and time screen lock was always there permissions tab is actually new so you guys could adjust the permissions to your standards so say for example let's go into phone for example no i wouldn't want the watch to know anything about my contacts so i could just put disabled if I want, or you know, in terms of messaging, I wouldn't want it to go inside of my phone, or not even inside. I wouldn't even want to access those things. And in this case, I'm going to use the transit app for this application. Wouldn't want the transit app to actually sync to my watch and then my watch knowing my location via transit app. So I could just press disabled. But it's actually a good thing to use because of transit itself. The app itself is really, really reliable, and I'll need that option on. But there's a lot of permissions here you could mess with. It saves you the time from going to your device and allowing the permission instead of just, you know, like, you could just tap one thing and it just allows the permission in a watch. So it saves a lot of time. Unpair feature, which is actually the factory reset option, but it's been changed to unpair and factory reset. Power off and about. And then we have the settings with the LG G watch name you know, the version of Android and whatnot. And we also saw the developer options, which was always there if you tap the bell button a lot of times. 
ADB bug in disabled, Android Wear op developer options, all those things, you know. And at the end, we have battery optimization. From here, we could actually play with those modes, but as you can see, it says not available, not available in this case. I guess on other watches, this will be available, but other than this variant, it is not available. But I think that's about it for the video itself. So, share, like, and subscribe for more content. This has been Audio from Compare Plus, just giving you guys an overview of Android 6.0.1 Marshmallow and the LG G Watch. I'll see you guys in the next video.